into the anointing because it's in the anointing that that seed multiplies. desire in your heart, guess what? You know it will come to pass. about that it's a good thing to think about amen <laughs> hallelujah you have the mind of Christ you know I get around Gary Smalley all the time and every time we go out to lunch about once a month he writes like about 50 got about 20 books on love you know and marriage 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 you know and, and he did a new book one time called love and food and we'd go out to lunch and he always asked me my ideas and then we got to talking about personal responsibility one day and we had this idea in Genesis about taking personal responsibility in a relationship and changing yourself before you change the other person, you know. And so he got this great idea called the DNA of relationships. And uh, anyhow, so, you know, now he's working on another, a couple of other books and so I dropped him off a book called Power of a Consecrated Heart because he's working on a book to deal with the heart and relationship and stuff. And, uh, you know, we get together and so he makes so, so every time he gets together one day he asked me he said man every time I get together with you quoting hundreds of scripture verses it seems like you know the whole Bible he says what's your IQ so I told him the Holy Ghost <laughs> amen I said I've got the mind of Christ amen no come on you need to get bold don't, don't, don't let be caught up with who people think you are in the natural the mind of Christ can receive all the things of the spirit amen uh, you understand what I'm saying so it's important, and what happens is when we in, begin to understand Scripture, you'll begin to see very clear that Hezekiah and Josiah had the courage to destroy the high places, amen, in Judea. And these people brought a great revival, amen, when they began to tear down all these different high places, amen. And there's lots you can say about that. I don't want to quote all these Scriptures, amen, but King Hezekiah restored the temple and the priesthood was reestablished and Passover and many things like that. And Josiah, who destroyed the altars in the high place, brought revival to the land of Judah. Amen. So whatever the kings did with the high places, amen, determined whether they were going to have revival or not. Hallelujah. And uh, some of you say, well, I don't know about some of those things, but you have to understand the importance of high places. When we begin to understand, uh, like we shared before, that God wants you to have a mountaintop experience, Man, when you begin to look at mountaintops in the Bible, uh, about Moses, you know, uh, being in the mountaintop, amen, Moses coming up to a burning bush in the mountaintop, and we talk about, you know, different kind of mountaintop experiences, not in the burning bush, but Elijah calling down fire from heaven was on Mount Carmel, amen. But you'll find out that a lot of issues or things that took place in the Bible took place in the high places, and uh, if, you're in, if you have a book at all on page 15, it's a, it, we speak of holy ground. And a mountaintop experience is a holy experience. Amen. God called Moses to do powerful things. And a lot of these things, not only that, Aaron's mantle was taken away from him in a high place. Amen. So we can see that high places are strategic places throughout the scripture. Uh, we can see that a lot of the ministry... Uh, when we start going through different ministries or, 
or, or dealings with high places are strategic. The experiences of power that takes place in high places. Now there's a battle for high places. John G. Lake said this one time. He said, I can see that there's coming from heaven new manifestations of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In power, new manifestations will be in a sweetness, in love and tenderness. Beyond anything your heart or mind ever saw, the very lightnings of God will flash through men's souls. You say, why write, why write a book on lightnings? Uh, I'll tell you what, because I remember, you know, we had, a little, we had a challenge today, but I remember one lady was raised from the dead we prayed for. I literally felt like a lightning bolt struck right through me, like a couple hundred volts shot right through me, and I knew there was no way she could stay dead. Amen. She had come alive. Now, I'm telling you, I believe that because I've seen lightning like power strike people to such a degree that they literally saw manifestations if like lightning beams are striking from above my head and hit people. And every one of those people we hit, for example, in Pittsburgh, Kansas, when I did that revival, amen, every one of those people we hit today are in full-time ministry. I thought that was fascinating, amen. So I believe this is a great place of power. During Jesus' ministry, he shows us a place of power. Think about Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, amen. Uh, think about Jesus casting the demon out of the man on the mountain. Think about Jesus going up to the mountain to pray. Think about the scripture that, that talks about mountains, about Mount Olive, when he goes up to pray on Mount Olive. Amen. And the Bible says when Jesus comes back, the mountain of olives will split. Amen. So one could go through a multitude of scriptures symbolically just to show you that mountains, amen, and experiences high place is a place of power. Now there is a high place. Another high place that we have is in our minds, our own minds, we have high places, whether we realize or not. These are thoughts that we exalt above the thoughts of God. And the Bible says this in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, 4 through 5. Go up there to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, 4 through 5, and you'll see something because I want you to see something very powerful about this. Weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty to God, to the pulling down of strongholds. Amen. Casting down imaginations and every high thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing every thought to captivity to the obedience of Christ. That's a great secret to power. When you can harness your thoughts. Amen. And I found out potential is harnessed on the highway of holiness. And it's so important. Amen. So what happens is these High places have to be demolished. They have to be destroyed. If you don't deal with Satan's altars in the high places, you will accept immoral behavior. And it will become established as a high place in your life. We must destroy them like Hezekiah and Josiah did. Now you know Solomon didn't take care of some of these high places. King Solomon fell prey to the strongholds of immorality and lust. Ended up having who's with me, hundreds of wives. And hundreds of concubines, who's with me? And before you know it, you can read the story about Solomon. And before you know it, Solomon started worshiping all his wives' gods. And you know that was the biggest downfall of Solomon. Basically, God makes it very clear that he'll tear Solomon's kingdom away from him. Because he began to worship all his wives' idols. Amen. So don't underestimate and think, oh, I'm just going to play games with God and I can just sin or do this and the power of God is going to flow. That's not, that's not true. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, every Hebrew king was judged according to what he did in the high places. Look at 2 Chronicles chapter 24 and verse 18. 2 Chronicles 24 verse 18. Therefore they left their house. Amen. Of the Lord God of their fathers and served wooden images and idols on the wrath came down upon Judah and Jerusalem because of their what? Trespasses. Amen. Some of you think God still changed today. He doesn't think that way. No, God hasn't changed. Amen. So first and second Kings tells us the story of how Solomon fell to these high places. And you know what happened? His kingdom, remember how it ended up being split? What a sad situation. Who remembers Asa? Asa initially removed some of the high places, but he didn't eliminate them. Can you believe that? Look at this story, 1 Kings chapter 15. 1 Kings 15, verse 11 through 14. 
You can get this. You'll get this. Asa did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, as did his father David. He banished and perverted persons from there and removed all idols that his father had made. Also, he removed Malchai's grandmother from being queen mother because she had made an obscene image of Asherah. An obscene image of Asherah. Who's with me? Hallelujah. And burn it at the brook Kidron. But the high places were not removed. Nevertheless, Asa's heart was loyal to the Lord all these days. Huh? Nevertheless, Asa's heart was loyal to the Lord all these days. Get this revelation. Keep going with me. Watch what happens. 1 Kings chapter 15, verses 16. Now there was a war between Asa and Basha, king of Israel days. Now look at verse 17. And Basha, king of Israel, came up against Judah and built Ramah, that they might let none go out or come into Asa, king of Judah. Amen. Look at verse 23. The rest of all the acts of Asa and all his might, all that he did and the cities which he built, are they not written in the book of Chronicles of the kings of Judah? But in the time of old age, he was diseased in his feet. Now you've got to get a revelation of this. He did not take authority. He did not tread upon the enemy. He did not put the devil where he belonged under his feet. And I tell you, the very thing he didn't deal with was the very thing that came to him. Amen. He might have been loyal to God, but he did not take care of some things God told him to do. He didn't stomp his foot down and say, that's enough, devil. I'm taking authority over you once and for all. We hope you have enjoyed this powerful revival message from apostolic revivalist Warren Hunter. We pray that this word from God has impacted your life in tangible and lasting ways. If this message has touched your life, please contact us at www.swordministries.org and let us know.